I'm Gold Ranger 88. Welcome to the podcast. Yay! Woo! Well, uh, take it easy, everybody. And uh, <laughs> I'm here with actually two people for once because everyone either keeps canceling on me or uh, they're getting sick because I don't know how you get sick during the summertime, but hell, everyone's <laughs> bodies differently. Uh, let's start with the young lady that we have with us. Let's be gentlemen. <clears throat> Alright, hey everyone, I'm Heather Stoltz. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. AKA Bio Woman. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bio Woman 90 is my gamer tag. She sounds ever so excited to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk All about right. this freaking awesome retro platformer here. Hey, this is Tom Bad Guy, and to quote one of my favorite radio personalities, hey now, hey now, hey now. I don't know if you guys listen to Howard Stern, but I love Howard Stern. I will say, when I first read your name, I thought it was Tom Brady for a second. Dude, okay, I will play <laughs> games online, like Rocket League, and everybody calls me that. And I hate the Patriots. Well, here's the and thing, I, I can't Tom read Brady. that well, so. <laughs> and me also being to Lex and reading stuff backwards is like, oh, bad guy. It's like, where's the R? It's like, come on, dumbass. Well, if I am Tom Brady, I'm owed, I'm owed some endorsement money. I'll tell you that. <laughs> now I'm trapped in the closet. So this, uh... Before we get into the segment, uh, tell me what y'all do on your all's channels. Heather, you go ahead. I'll be a gentleman as well. Oh, <laughs> um, well, I've only just recently begun streaming some video games. I've only um, really been doing it for two months now. Two months? Wow, man. That's, I mean, I met you through Chatty Cathy. Yeah. I mean, I, um, I, I like I just her found channel. her... I found her randomly on YouTube. I was like, oh, hey, this person's live streaming. I'm going to go check it out. I was like, oh. Same, this is same awesome. here. I think I found her when she was at 3,000 subscribers. Like, I'm probably going to do a video on like some top YouTubers one day. Uh, <laughs> she's the kind of channel that, uh, that, since she got so big, she doesn't make fun of you. She doesn't, like, oh, hey, look, I don't need you low lives anymore. I'm, I'm the big guy. I like her because she has a loving husband that's willing to help her with with the channel and grow and interact yeah. and I respect that because she's I donate dollars here and there but she has shown me so much kindness even though I have currently broke away from the gaming channel that I had to start my own and it's really hard for me right now to start my own channel by myself with me not knowing what the hell I'm doing I mean I know some I know how to edit a little but you know I, I, like, I like to do when I get a little more up there to do some uh, storytelling like tell some grimoire stories uh, I, I love doing top five videos. I've been watching a lot lately on the internet. And, uh, like, you know, if y'all haven't seen my top five 90s cartoons video and the podcast, I've talked about that. And, uh, mm -hmm. I do a little bit of live streaming, and I've been, <laughs> been trying to work with that with some shitty internet, but you can't help that, can you? <laughs> so, Tom Brady, yeah. I, well, I caught you playing uh, Mega Man 2, one of the greatest games ever. And I told my friend to stop by because he's a huge Mega Man fan. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, you call me Tom Brady. Sorry. Uh, second of all... <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> dyslexic. I'm actually looking at your name <laughs> <Yeah>. right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can just say Tom. That, that works for me. Uh, so, yeah, I stream on Twitch. Yeah, you did catch me stream in Mega Man 2. And they Very just good. announced recently the Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, which I'm excited about. Anyway, I stream on Twitch. Which I Legacy just recently was started... that, by the way? Because I had the one for PlayStation 1, which... Which was like kind of like a blur 3D block, but it was still fun to play. Well, this one, they released the newer one that's on like 3DS and Steam and consoles, ah. which is Mega Man Legacy Collection, which was 1 through 6. And then they're making a second one, which is going to be 7, 8, 9, 10. So the two liked, that were I never released. I like 10. Oh, I, 10 out of all the. 7 I played, which was super hard. 10 I thought was it was okay. I never played 8 or 9. 3 though. was hilarious. Just yeah, the three's fun. Like Snake Man, huh? Are we just running out of ideas? Hey, I like the weapons he shoots. They're tiny and little snakes. And then WB picked awesome. up Capcom's Megan. Let's turn this into a gay show. Biggest mistake of <laughs> their life. Mega Man. So, I do a lot of streaming on Twitch for a website I'm a part of called BTW Productions. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Damn. I do that. <clears throat> well... Our topic for today is uh, bullying. Uh, how I came across this topic, well, 
the Crimson Stew that was supposed to be on here has got sick, but I saw a couple uh, of his post one day, and I guess right before May ended, and he said, oh, I forgot what the post said. But basically, it was about share this because there's a lot of bullying going on, like cyber bullying, and the way we look at America, that it's kind of like we're bullying other countries and whatnot. Well, my saying is fuck half the other countries because they're trying to kill us. Uh, I, I want to get into something like, how was it growing up for you? Were you bullied? Were, were you abused by others? Being made fun of for just being different? And uh, I want to discuss that with y'all. And I'll go last if anyone wants to volunteer to go first. Well, I volunteered to go first earlier, but in this whole spirit of being gentlemanly, <laughs> Heather, if you'd like to go first, we'll totally let you go or I can take it. Uh, I can just picture Tom now being a gentleman with a little monocle and a couple of He's like, yes, indeed. And a top hat. <laughs> and a top hat. <laughs> and a taco. Tacos rule. Yep, and the taco. Um, sure, I don't mind going first. Um, Go actually, I got glasses in third grade, and I used to get picked on for, you know, the classic name call Four, Four Eyes. eyes yeah. So I hid my glasses about two weeks after I got them and told my mom I lost them. So I did not use my glasses for reading like I was supposed to for numerous years. Um, about eighth grade, I got glasses again, and this time I had friends who, a lot of them wore glasses, so I didn't have to put up with that anymore. That's good to have people like that, too. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it goes for, you know, men, but women, we... Um, we tend to get bullied, like, if we develop later than the rest of our friends. How long did this go on? To, can, did you continue, can you get bullied, like, as you got older, or was it just a certain year when you were in school? I should have um, asked that question. Uh, for the glasses, that was about second grade. Um, the development-wise, that was, like, seventh, eighth grade, when all my friends were, you know started hitting puberty and I was like the last one or whatever get made fun of because you know I wore baggy shirts which was comfortable but you know and it's still cool to this day <laughs> I wear, yeah I love wearing um, baggy pants it's comfortable to work in <laughs> yeah I, I, I let my mom know hey you know I've a couple of my friends are teasing me because you know they all are starting to wear bras and stuff and so she was just ignore bras. them yeah well, no, they they were, you know, developed more than just training bras. It's the future, um. man. <laughs> we have strapless so, or whatever. <laughs> what, what was your mom's advice for you? Um, she said just ignore them, you know, the women in our family are just a little bit late bloomers, but, you know, we tend to be taller than most average women, so, you know, they may develop now, but they might not, you know, reach a certain height like you will because of your family. But okay. Yeah, I don't know if physical development was a guy thing. I mean, we're an entire race of dudes who dudes. constantly tease and pick on each other in regards to penis size, yet we've never seen any other man's penis ever except our dad's. And <laughs> I mean, that's it. Uh, he's not lying. <laughs> that's it. That's it for like all guys. And that's they why we have about the internet now, size. people. Yeah. Because and that's it's why like, Google I mean, Plus is just full of shit now because it's nothing but porn. So, <laughs> it's size true. Isn't search, size. Yeah, search for something. <laughs> so, like, I mean, we tease each other about it, but we have no idea what other another dude's dick looks like. So, I mean, I think I think that's definitely except for the Asians. definitely something. Yeah. <laughs> they work really hard because they're no fun. Oh God, I'm horrible. See, this is it. This is a perfect example. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's how that's how our yeah, see, see, phys, yeah. quote unquote physical development teasing and stuff goes is talking shit about something we'll never see, see. and I mean that's basically for us. We blame I, I can cartoons. understand how it could be harder for women because I mean I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be gross or anything. I can understand how it could be harder for women because you can see more of the physical developments where the guys. I mean. Somebody could be wearing straight pants, and it's either you know, it's either three inches or three feet. You'll never know. Actually, so. actually, speaking of bullying, I saw a movie on Netflix the other day, and God, it was like the worst thing I've ever saw. And it's like this isn't even a horror movie. It was hashtag horror. I was watching. Okay, it was you no know, plot developing and all that. And as mm -hmm. the girl went missing, it's like you're a bunch of twelve year olds. Like, wait a minute, they're twelve. 
12 year olds are doing this shit they are picking and making fun of each other and yet they don't notice that like further down the hill there's a car with a dead body in it and I'm like Jesus Christ who made this oh foreign people (laughs) they have bad taste and it's like you just killed everyone off at the end I'm like okay bad movie but I was watching it's like this is what our generation is nowadays. We have all this technology. Let's cyber bully. Let's, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, Heather, do you feel that any type of bullying or teasing in your life has had any long-lasting effects? Um, yes. Um, I, I can't say exactly which family member because, you know, I do have a couple siblings that watch YouTube. And I don't need it getting back to them, but I did have a family member who, because I liked video gaming, it was my outlet growing up that Mm -hmm. when I had a bad day at school or something was just, like, at home was wrong, I'd play video games. Well, I got told that when I grow up, I will be nothing but lazy and fat. So I would say that stuck around because I still have really bad self-esteem. Like, my husband is a wonderful man. He tries constantly, you're beautiful, hey, you look good today, and still all that's in my mind is what my family member told me. Hmm. And how old are you? I will be 27 next Tuesday. And I'm not trying, when I ask this question, (laughs) when I ask this question, I'm not trying to insinuate anything, but have you thought about therapy? Um... I Not really. I don't want to be mean. <laughs> I had a friend, and we went to the school that they will actually help you get a job. Well, thanks to the lovely fuck you school board system. I mean that in general for years to come, they fucked my education up worse than anything, and I moved since my grandfather died. I'll tell that story later on. Basically, he wanted to help people since, you know, he, he hated his mother and father, but uh, he wanted to become a psychiatrist. They fired him for one reason. This person had like the worst problem you would ever see right mm-hmm. he tried everything and so okay if nothing's working here's what i here's what i have to tell you go kill yourself if you do not want help you do not want to get help you don't want to make things better then kill yourself end it he said yeah that's how you that's how you do your job wrong yeah well you know, here's, here's what he says like i have i'm sitting here helping you your family's helping you but you do not want to like you know get help we know you're broken debt we're trying to lift you up but when you're refusing everything around you then just kill yourself because i'm not trying to be a dick like he said he says i have i'm out of options i've done everything i've learned you know just and they fired him like you can't do this like it worked she turned it around <laughs> I don't think you could tell somebody to kill themselves, though, in that line of work. Was he working with a practice, or was he just... Uh, his, his it own? was like a field test, you know. Mm, okay. Like, here's a patient. He actually, uh, after they did that, they sent him to a psychologist. And Yeah. Funny story. Uh, he was talking to the psychologist, like, really? What are you going to do to make me, you know, do this? Like, are you a psychologist? Like, yes, I am really fucked up in the head. And I, I kind of agree with him. If you admit you got a problem, you're, you're, you're normal. Because you're, and not, that's, you're not denying it. And that's definitely the first thing. I used to have a very negative outlook on but, therapy but because I didn't the, like the idea. Thing. The next day, because he, he, he can, my friend can examine a person, like, you know, sit here, like, look at you, he's like, okay. Like, you know, it's, why is your wife leaving you? That's well, none of your business. Well, oh, you did something. It's like, this is about you. He's like, no, not about me. Then kill yourself. Next day, the therapist killed himself, hung himself. I'm like, what did you do? It's like, easy. Oh, I broke the man down to a symbol of nothingness. And I'm like, you're a monster. Thank you. <laughs> well, and I could see how people hearing that story can have a negative view of therapy as well. Uh, I used to, and late, really late in my life, I developed a panic disorder. And I used to be against therapy because I didn't like the idea that I needed somebody's help to do something and I had my issue is repression I used to repress a lot and it causes big issues so but then I actually went to therapy and it was actually extremely helpful so Heather like I said I'm not saying that you have some serious problem where you should feel bad about it but if you actually feel that you have self-esteem issues from something that happened a really long time ago and you can't shake it I would suggest talking to somebody about it and it can't actually be cheap 
Yeah, either a good friend or a therapist. I, I would mean, suggest speaking of therapy, working through the issue. I, I went to these field classes. Like, they'll help you get like a welding job or something. Yeah, you got to go see one therapist. Oh, but they want me to go see many more therapists because, you know, me being with disabilities. And I had this lay therapist. like, oh, it's like, why, why am I here? And it's like, it's like I, told, I told her, you are wasting my fucking time. I am not learning anything. And she kept running. I was like, you know, here, why don't you write this down? I don't want you to go fuck yourself. And never come contact me again because I'm sure I can get my father and he can break your ass down. Because my dad kind of. Oh, we obviously me. have a my dad difference people. of opinion and experience. Well, it's like I want to learn something, a skill, and you think I'm fucked up in the head, you know? Look, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. There's stuff in the past I'm not proud of. I have skeletons in my closet, you know. But we have urges, and we we can't help it, and we're gonna, you know pay for it later on in the afterlife. But, uh, I, can def- oh, I'm sorry. I can definitely say that due to that, um, I constantly am telling my oldest two are girls who one will be eight within the next two weeks and six. So I constantly tell them that you're fine how you look. You know, they've got classmates who do their drugs. parents start doing, you know, makeup on them. Just a mm-hmm. little bit of eyeshadow or lip gloss, and tell them they want makeup. I said, you don't need makeup to be pretty. No, as... In the Catholic Church, don't dress like a whore. (laughs) So, with you raising girls, is there a certain age where you're going to allow them you makeup? How do you decide that? That's a good question. (laughs) I'm knocking stuff over on my desk by accident. Oops. Well, I don't know. Myself, I particularly had no interest in makeup. I still don't really, I mean, if I'm bored, I'll put it on, but, mm-hmm. um, makeup to me was one of those things, oh, it's picture day, my mom's gonna put makeup on my face now. Oh, boy. Or, oh, there's a school dance, yay, I gotta have makeup on now. Fuck school dances, I know <laughs> And I'll get to that story. Um, but no, if we have, like, a big family function or something, and I'm, I put my makeup on just so, you know... Like I said, I'm bored, so I'll put it on before yeah. we go, or they go, Mom, can I have some? It's like, okay, I will put a little bit of eyeshadow on, but if you rub your eye, I'm not redoing it. So, so but they, if they're, when they grow up and say they were, they want to get into makeup, that becomes a thing, like, is that something you'd be okay with, but, like, if they're at a certain age or something? I would, I have told them I would prefer them to wait till they're, like, at least 15, 16. Yeah. Just so they can know that, you know, it's not needed. Because I I know someone who has used makeup since she was 12, and she is, you know, in her mid-30s now, and she said she has to use even more makeup than when she was in high school because of how much it would close off her pores, like how yeah. much worse her skin is now. It's all oil. That's basically all makeup is. It's all greasy oil. Yeah. Uh, Tom, I want to. Well, hear it sounds from... like you're a responsible parent. <laughs> Tom, Tom, I want to hear. I want to hear your past now. Uh, my experience with bullying is more is classic along the lines of Heather's with the glasses. When I was a kid, probably from sixth grade to my junior year in high school, I was a fat kid. I weighed like almost 300 pounds then, and uh, so I got teased a lot for being fat. And especially in gym classes, stuff like that oh, with running man, and stuff, people would make fun of me. That's the worst. Yeah, I, it it didn't deter me because I like gym class, and I like playing football, and I like playing sports. So like, it, like I always look at bullying as kind of two things. And for what for what I experienced, I never experienced excessive bullying where it turned into like physical abuse or something like that. My my advice for my parents is teasing and stuff, which I think everybody's going to go through every, until not even as a kid in your yeah, adult life you're going like, to go yeah, through there's it there's teasing there's being a dick yeah. and they're just being like oh yeah. I'm better than you kind of thing to me that falls under the category if I, you're better than me you're bullying and you're a loser so yeah yeah and that's why I think and that's like, why how I see bullying so so my my advice to me was ignore the small stuff and the best thing my mom ever told me is she says if somebody lays a hand on you you don't like it you have my permission to kick their ass so my <laughs> sophomore and junior year in high school I got in a lot of fights because I was sick of tired of people making fun of me, and I got in a lot of fights. And then it, it was basically just literally because I was just a fat kid. That, that was literally also because 
I like at that time I was really really super into anime and people teased me about that but at least through my experience we all tease each other about anything anybody likes because right. that's a thing like kids do and so uh yeah i got in a lot of fights but after like my junior in high school like it just stopped like i don't know I, to me i kind of had this idea that people got the message because i got in about two or three fights people got the message that i wasn't gonna get fucked around with and then also i think people started growing up and understanding that life was coming so everybody kind of mellowed life out a bit sucks. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, definitely being the fat kid's rough, and it, this is going to be super cliche to say, is uh, it does get better, because I know when you're a kid, shit can seem so terrible, but it does get better. It gets better, it totally, totally gets better, because then if you're an adult and somebody says you're fat, you could tell them to fuck off, drive off in your car, go home, and do whatever the fuck you want. When you're a kid in school... Sometimes you feel like you have to sit there and take it because, you know, the That's big, the hard the big, part yeah, the big contradiction is you don't want to fight somebody because, you know, you're raised or you're told or you believe that that's not good and that you can work out differences other ways because that's what civilized people do. And so kids tease you. You don't want to go overboard. You don't want to fight them because that's contradicting everything inside you that, you know, is morally right. But if you want, if somebody is somebody is teasing you excessively and say it goes to physical abuse my personal belief you have to fight back you absolutely have to do something about it i, I, I fighting back nowadays it's I, I think hard. you have to it's hard because at the same time like oh someone can call the cops on you oh someone's parents is not doing this shit and i think a lot of time with bullying parents do do that stuff or the kid's parents is bullying the yeah. kid and exactly like, like, well, you know if you're an alcoholic you know don't take it out on anyone i mean I, I yeah I drink but I'm not a big drinker and I want to go have fun with my friend like some people here that I work with oh I'm, I don't drink a lot oh gee your life fucking sucks <laughs> one day like <laughs> yeah. you know I want to drink and have fun <clears throat> I definitely think it starts like if if there's a kid that's just a little shit it definitely something going on at home that needs to be addressed and recognized and like if they're just a little fucking hell spawn. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking at the parents and seeing what the hell's going on there, because that's where it starts. That's definitely where it starts. Well, like people say, you can't spake your children in public anymore. We'll call child services. Like, look, motherfucker, that child is mine until it's 18. I'm gonna smack some yeah. discipline into my child. My parents, my parents spanked me until we were too big, and everything they spanked me and my brother with just broke on our ass, and then they stopped because we were too old. But no, I got I got spanked, yeah. and I have no problem with. I it. got the belt. You know, my it's, dad, it's my dad was an Air Force man, and he gave mm -hmm. me two options: either I straighten up right now, or you're gonna get the belt, or I'm sending your butt to military school. And when I was in California, yeah. he wasn't lying. That base was that, just that around sounds, the corner. <laughs> that sounds super familiar because my dad was an Army Ranger, and it was pretty much along the same lines. I I remember getting the threats of. I'm going to drop you off at the military depot, and I'm going to leave you there. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember stuff like that. That's what my dad said. Get in the damn seat, and we're going to drop you off. You do not talk to your mother yep. like that, and you do not do that to your yep. sister. Well, that, that's definitely. You know how I did that? I just said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I just deal with my children. Look, I turned out to be the good kid of the family out of my other <laughs> siblings. You know? I mean, my brother is a senior in college, and I miss him and love him to death. I'm just like... Wow, I know we have our problems, but I'm just one glad I have a job with benefits, which today yeah. is actually my nine year anniversary at my damn store. Like my Hey, store. congrats. That my store doesn't give a shit. Like, pay me more money, I don't need this quarter <laughs> bullshit. I'm trying to find a place of my own, it's hard. Money wise. <laughs> you know. You gotta have that yeah. money. Uh, I think but I'm I think I think. Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just just one final thought. I think bullying today is different with the invention of the internet and how everybody's on the internet now because nobody has any sense of consequence when they're typing something on there. And people have this thing in their head that thinks that if I'm not looking at the person or I'm not physically saying it, I can say whatever I want. And it's I'm right. sick and tired of this speech without consequence. I mean, because, I mean, if somebody calls you a loser online, yeah, there right. is nothing you could do about it. But because people feel they feel no consequence, they don't have to think about it. It's wide open now. So the cyberbullying thing, I think, that's that's like the Enough. new problem. And once again, that goes back to the parents' homes and why I they're mean, having their kids do this shit. Speaking of cyberbullying, last year I created a Facebook group. Still want to grow, but I loved it. I, I, I add someone in here. 
she was getting on me about spelling. Yes, I'm just looking. It's like, you're going to get me. It's like, no, it's your own fault. It's no one else's fault. And I'm like, okay, one, you're pissing me off. And two, you're getting me angry. It is the school's fault. It's not my fault. I can't help it. I try my best. And she mm-hmm. just kept going on. I was like, you know what? Here, I'm going to fucking block you. Fuck you, bitch. Yeah. It's like, you know, and it's there like, you go. It's like, you know, that's the best. I can't that's... help it. And you're telling me, I, gotta, I blame myself. Hell, I'm a 29-year-old man. I still don't drive because I am scared in this state where I'm in now in Alabama because people can't drive that well. I don't want to risk my fucking life. I'd rather have leg power than, you know. <laughs> oh, I understand. Uh, I so know. the block feature is the greatest thing. Uh, I, I, if, if anybody feels they're cyberbullying, I would totally just use the block feature. And, Facebook and doesn't that's do it. shit. Just, I would just, I... Yeah, just get rid of them. And but I mean, or or you're me, I will talk shit back to you. I will, I will fucking or go you're that twelve one rounds. Cool I don't guy in the group is like, oh really? Now you and what army? I, I I will I will do it. I will go twelve rounds and I will be fucking annoying. I don't care. But I won't I won't start it. But I'll sure as fuck finish it. I had a guy that in another group did it. It was like, it's like, oh really? What are you gonna do about it? you and what army? Oh, I don't need an army. I have the fuck you button. <laughs> well, whatever happened to the simple stuff like that, like you and what army, uh, you're a butthead, you know, just I really simple, <laughs> great teasing, and then just really easy comebacks, and nobody felt sad for you and what army, or I called it first, who cares, I called it second, like, oh, it was a simpler I've time then, I feel. I've seen a lot of cyberbullying in an Overwatch group, it's like, oh, you suck, you can't get, it's like, this is why I don't play fucking competitive, I mean, I want to, to you know, rank up, but... Someone had one good point. It's like, talk, be friend with them. Don't bring them down. It's like, oh my god, why is no oh, one yeah. sharing this? Why is there yeah. not a share button it's on here? <laughs> it's because um, people people are super fucking salty. Go ahead, Heather. Sorry. Another game like Overwatch is Smite. Oh, yeah, um, I heard about that. Never played it. I let my eight year old play on my Xbox, and because she wanted to play with me, but I couldn't let her play on my PlayStation with me because it's single play. Um, well, I went back in on my Xbox to check it out, and there's a direct message to my screen name saying to go kill yourself. Wow. Because he didn't like how my daughter was playing. It's like, she's seven, almost eight. You don't know what age the people are letting kids play because, you know, it's not one of the most graphic games. I think so like, kids can play since it. we do have an age restriction on here, there should be an offline mode to play these games. Yeah, but it's an online game. I think or there should be there should be a parental type thing to right. at least attempt to put child servers or something like that there for younger. But even that will fail because somebody will fake it and go in there and just start saying fucked up shit to kids. My uh, my friend Garrett had his Garrett. daughter streaming a goat simulator. <laughs> and somebody went within eight minutes. Somebody went into the chat and said she sounds hot. And then he <laughs> said, and then he said she's four. And then he said even better. And he kicked him out of there. Like people are fucked up. up in the head. And like I said, it's the speech without consequence. If you want a kid like, to play a good thing. game, Gauntlet Legends is a great game to play with people. Now, yes, you could rage quit with friends. I had a friend, and we still make fun because he's an asshole and got arrested and I laughed. That's a GameCube game? It's been on all different consoles and different versions. It's even been an arcade game. Uh, we used to make I think fun I of have fr- We used to make fun of Frank because he kept stealing the food. Like, you can't take all the food. Like, oh, I, I'm, oh, I'm the tank. It's like, so what? The wizard's dying! <laughs> and I always played the wizard because I like a long range attack. So I'm like, you're a dick, so we just kicked him out. And even when we played Halo, it like, we, it's like, why are you kicking me out? It's like, you got us killed on super hard mode. Everyone in this party said fuck off. Because <laughs> yeah. they're tired of the same cutscene. And I'm going to tell my story now because yeah. you know, we've, been, we've been ranting on. But when I was growing up, uh, <laughs> I was a shy person. Very shy. I didn't like talking a lot. The, the same, my mind liked to wander a lot. Like, you know, like, I'm not, I didn't know I had a disability. I didn't know what the hell all this was. And I guess when I was, I want to say third to fourth grade, uh, the school in Texas had like a YMCA after school just to drop your kids off. I got bullied to the point where, for liking Power Rangers, 
And I'm like, just because my name was, you know, my parents call me different names, but Billy, you know, uh-huh. that makes me a blue. Like, I like red. I like blue. I like black now. But it's like, why are you blowing for them? They said, I can't play board games right. And I'm stupid. I mean, hell, when I first started YouTube channel, someone said I had the brain of a child because I, I was saying The Witcher 3 is a sucky game. Well, that's my fucking opinion. Fuck, go fuck yourself. Yeah. But, uh, actually, gro- wait, wait, wait. Who was made? Wait. When you were growing up, you're made fun of liking Power Rangers, or because you like Power Rangers now? Growing up, I have the See, entire that's, collection. See, that's bullshit. Because who didn't like the Power Rangers? That's so like. That was the thing growing up. I still have an affinity for the Power Rangers. I don't Why? like the movie, and I haven't seen it. It's like this looks like garbage. I mean, probably because I'm just getting old. I don't like. Jungle. like I don't like. Uh, what was it? Uh, what was that new jungle thing? Uh, Dino Char. Dino Char looks stupid. Operation over a. For us to need to watch. I mean, there are some seasons like this is just stupid and recycled crap. Hell, but I, I mean, every everybody watched it, and everybody has that childhood thing that they still like and they like a lot. I, 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 I think hate, it's bullshit that Dino somebody Thunder gave you shit if, about. If they didn't have Jason David Frank in there, yeah. So re- regular. I'm Thunder. just wondering if maybe these these people saying stuff to you for like in Power Rangers have no soul and didn't have a childhood we were, at all. We were we were young. And then, like, you know, yeah. as you got older, like, middle school, they made fun of you because, oh, hey, let's go fucking psych. Yeah, I went psyching one time in school, and I'm like, I was going to blow up the school. They said, oh, look, he's fucked up in the head. Yeah, because you're teaching me the same thing I've, I got taught a year ago. I really need, you know, push my horizon, move forward, you know. So they, they put you in these dumb classes, and they make fun of you, like, oh, hey. Like like you said, you're not going to have nothing to do. I'm never... I went to high. Uh, this is probably before I moved. I was in a high school. I had my DS with me. Someone said, "Some dumb blonde bitch said, oh, you still play video games? You're such a child." And my rebuttal back was, "Oh, so I guess dressing like a cunt every day is just a basically everyday life. At least I have fun." And she just gasped, and then I got detention. So when you called in the bomb <laughs> threat, was it because you're getting such a hard time at school and you're just fucking pissed off at all of them? There was that, and I don't remember if that was, I can't remember if it was for my, my mom's father passed away, and I was just like, you know, I was angry because, yeah, it's like, you know, everyone is dying around you, and I I don't remember that far back, because I told someone, the older I get, I I forget the past, because it haunts me, and you don't want to remember the past, and, uh, I guess, you know, it, I had a good middle school, and it was just getting to high school. The one thing my dad told me, don't take shit from anyone. Stay, you're, you're big, stay, be strong. I did. And I remember mm-hmm. uh, I met a good friend, uh, and I've gotten to a couple of fights, and it wasn't my fault. Uh, he had my back, and I would have to say girls were the biggest bullies uh, when I started high school. Because they never gave me a chance, and that made me sad. Yeah, no offense, Heather, but girls can be really mean. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Heather. Uh, <laughs> and uh, when someone, when some asshole kid was talking about my sister, and I did hang around emos and goths because, well, I wanted a friend. I didn't know what fucking emos and goths was in high school. Like I said, slow mind. I can just see the comments now. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know. Clicks in high school, I was never a part of any well, clique. I didn't know what clicks were. I had a girl for a yeah. long time. She was fucking psycho because this guy took her from me. It's like the leaders of the goths, whatever. I got pissed. So, and then going back to like when this. You said the, the leader of the goths? Sounds like I'm going movie. by South Park references now. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Well, last I heard, my friend said he's actually become a normal human being. I'm like, oh, well, go figure. Is his whole family dead? Not trying to be mean or anything, but you know, still. Ooh. Thanks for the shitty fucking high school experience. Um, I mean, I did move because you know family and passing away. But when I was uh, in Virginia, uh, someone was making fun of my sister. I fucking flipped because I've learned one thing: you gotta have honor. You gotta know what you fight for. Yeah. I was I was kicking his ass, and he kept blocking my punches. And oh, one of the you know, the god people held me back, and I said, let me go, or I'll kill you instead. And the guy just See, laughed. that's a... 
that's definitely what what will fuel my fire is people who can say whatever the fuck they want to say about me, but you say something about somebody I care about. And I got that's when I flip, that's when I flip the switch. And my that's dad got super angry. He's like, "Were you defending?" He's like, "Yes." So what my best friend did, he hunt that guy down, kicked his ass. Now this is like a dark secret. I found the guy in him with a shovel. That's my darkest what? secret. Yeah. You hit him with a shovel. Yeah. We have woods where we used to live, and uh, I told him if I ever catch you talking shit about my sister again, I won't just beat you. I will kill you. And that that scared him. That that left him alone. That that feared him. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't I, want like say, I don't want to feel like like I'm the bad guy like do, talking about this because that that was my dark secret there. That was like the skeleton in my closet. Like, I am not proud of that. But oh, uh, yeah. When I took I that you. first swing, that was like I enjoyed it. That was my bloodlust. I'm like, I liked it. You know, I mean, I'm sorry about I'm talking to all this to random people, but uh, yeah, I mean, you can call me fucked up in the head, but. As I, uh, my grandfather passed away, we had to move to where I'm at now. And this is years ago. Uh, uh, well, I wouldn't, uh, just real quick, I wouldn't say you're fucked up in the head just for the fact that you admitted that you're not proud of it. Then that at least shows that well, you're a human it. being <laughs> and you're acknowledging that you did something probably pretty evil and that you're not proud of it. Everybody has a story like that, that they're not proud of. If you'd like. I could tell you a story I am super not proud of. I want to finish this story first because it actually, okay. right. actually leads up to, like, yeah. <laughs> because uh, I think when I was a – I'm trying to say if I was a junior. Yeah, I was a junior. I was moving. Uh, the school board was a bunch of dicks. They didn't want to put me into any harder classes. Uh, uh, basically, I was bullied in the new school I moved to by adults, teachers, uh, some of the kids I met there were nice to me, but they did bully me. Like, some, hey, call this hot chick. It was someone's mother. That's low. I mean, that's a whole time, like, you know, low for people. Yeah. And I don't remember anyone from school. Then I got asked to, like, I guess homecoming or prom or whatever. Someone said yes, and then, oh, next day at school I wanted to talk to her. Like, oh, hey, what time do you want me to pick you up? Uh, she was never to be found. She was like, oh, she's not going with you. That broke my fucking heart and just, like, it fueled the rage inside me. And I, I, I hated that school. I was like, I hope someone blows this school up. And then I think as, so, as I got older, they made me repeat some classes like, oh, this, these classes didn't count your old school. I'm like, that, that pissed me off. And then my dad said, you need to apologize to my, my son. Don't apologize to me. Apologize to my son for what you're doing to him. So, you know, I took the classes and you know, I, I had to take a fucking business class just to pass. I said, like, give me my fucking diploma since I attended high school. And they said, Where, why are you leaving? It's like, I'm going to work. It's like, you can't do it. It's like, yeah, I am. I'm 20. I can do whatever the fuck I want. If you want to get your fat ass up this hill and come catch me, go for it. And he just turned around. I'm like, see, w when I was an adult, I had power. But at the same time, going into the work world, you really can't stand up for yourself because you need a paycheck. I got bullied at work by management, by coworkers. Same thing when I want to start the job I am been doing for nine years, but it's gotten better over the years. I had a shitty manager. I had managers said I'm not that smart. I'm not that bright. Well, guess what? You know, you're selling scammy cosmetic makeup, so fuck you. I mean, I can get bullied by customers, and I'm just like, I want to say something, and I want to just flip out and go on a rage, but I can't. It's like that's how me growing up was, and at the same time. I, I kind of think I, I'm a sick person, but I know I'm not because I have a friend that we used to hate each other in high school, and voila, for some reason we're friends now all of a sudden. They'll be for another time for another podcast, if I can ever get him on. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's been great for me over the years. He saved my life from committing suicide. Uh, I got depressed, and that's how I found Team Four Star to entertain me, but... Uh, he always told me, like I said, we're all fu we're Every person on this earth is, we are all fucked up in the head. We just have to know what fuels us, what is our compassion, what is our thing for living in life. And I keep rallying that in my head. It's like, he's right. What do I fight for in my life? What keeps me going in life? Because, uh, hell, I'm in a state for a bunch of fucking rednecks. They're useless. They're <laughs> losers. I'm better than these people. <laughs> I mean, I don't do drugs right now, but, you know, it's like, uh, hell, they... This is the worst state I'm in that has bad managing uh, budgeting here. And I want, Tom, I, uh, I want, you wanted to say something. 
Oh. I was just going to tell a story real quick about how you do things that you're not proud of because yeah. I didn't want you to seem like the odd person out. And I'm going to be I'm going to be clean about it. I, I this is an adult story. I think I was like, right. uh, mine I had to be like, too. <laughs> I had to be like about I think I was like 22, 23. There was this girl at this party. We were both drinking and la la. <laughs> I wanted to take her back to my place. So I drunk knowingly once again, not proud of this lied to her and be like yeah i want to take you out and i want to do all this stuff and i was lying i was completely lying and i wanted her to come to my house and then so she did stuff happened i realized halfway through it and then towards the end that it was a huge mistake and that i was a piece of shit for doing it and then i the next morning i wake up and she's there and i still should have just right there told her like i'm sorry this is a mistake i'm a lying piece of shit right now and I'm obviously in a fucked up part of my life to where I think doing something like this is okay. And I didn't. I Instead, I was too scared to say something like that. So I hassled her out of the house without giving her my number. And then she kept messaging me. What, what did we use back then? MySpace? Everybody remember MySpace? What the hell and is she that? Kept, <laughs> <laughs> she kept messaging me. She kept messaging me until finally I just told her I was sorry. And what I did was like fucked up. And like, so I know there's somebody out there. That thinks I'm a horrible piece of shit. I deserve to be thought that way from that person. I personally don't think I am. It was a mistake. I got. I'm not proud of it. That. And that was a horrible thing to do to somebody. So I suggest not doing it. I, had I a, highly suggest not doing it. I had a girlfriend here, and uh, I don't have many girlfriends here that are a piece of shit. I had one, and then I found out she asked me, "What does cheating mean to me?" I'm like, "Why are you asking this?" Like, I'm cheating on you, and I'm like, "Why are you doing this to me?" Okay, like I guess. Three years later, I, we went out again. She said, I'll never do it again. Oh, she said she doesn't love me anymore. That's the same thing. She says, oh, I still love you, but I just feel like we're just friends. Like, no, when you say you, that you don't love me anymore, that's saying that you don't love me at all. That's the same thing. And I'm like, you know, I told uh, my other friend, Roger, uh, I told him I got enraged. I was very angry, and I felt like I wanted to go on a killing spree. No, I didn't do that. I worked on my YouTube channel. I was There's calm. This classic line of, I don't love you, I don't feel like that for you anymore, but I still love you as a friend. Yeah. That means you yeah. don't love me still. I mean, I got over it, because when I was on the YouTube, I was like, oh, are you going to edit some videos? I was like, uh, no, if I have time. Which means, no, why should I do that if you did something stupid? Then I kind of did a little digging, because, well, her best friend does work with me, and I'm like, oh, she listened to her mother, and her mother's like the worst, you know, person to give advice to. I mean, look at her fucking relationship, but um, I mean, I'm happy, but I would love to have you know someone in my life to talk to that loves me. You know, that doesn't do stupid shit. Cause I took her to the ballpark, and my mom said she was standing up by, near the balcony, just standing there. It's like I don't know what the fuck she's doing. But like, fuck, I'm watching the baseball game right now. Hey, you're still young. Give yourself time. I'm 29. <laughs> she was 20. You got this. Dude, people are living to be like a hundred years old now. No, I'm You're talking about. Good. I want to at least get married before I'm 35, or I, or I don't want to be that guy. It's like I'm a rich asshole because I, I saved I all know. my money. Marriage, marriage with me is weird because I look at it as more of a label. I like Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. They've been together forever. They never got married because they didn't see. They don't see what the point is. I'm kind of like that too. I don't like if you I, want to get married. I've, that's great. I've that's fine. I have nothing get against married, it. Like at 22, 21, I'm like, you're too young. My parents didn't get married till they were 25. And didn't have me until uh, they were 28. I, I got like, married at 19. Are what? you happy, Heather? That's the answer <laughs> yeah. to my question. And good. I've, I've been with my husband for 12 and a half years. We've wow. been married almost eight. No divorce. Good. Wow. Because half the people I know in this state are all divorced or fucked up in the head or dead. Most likely <laughs> dead. Well, anyone got more stories to tell? Because, uh, well, we got ten more minutes since we basically. I have hit, one that kind of involves my the, brother. I go for it. Um. Well, his friend was being bullied because his friend came out that he was bi, but he only told maybe like a handful of their friends, and you know, a couple of their friends had started bullying him, and their parents had told him it was okay to bully him. What? It made my brother so mad that he no longer talked to his friends who bullied his other friend. He let me know about it because, you know, I am bi. And I said, yeah, okay, which tell. friend? 
I have a witch friend because I've met I met almost all of his friends. I have. He's a lot of gay like this one. Oh. <laughs> Trust me. He goes this one. I was like, okay. Does he not realize I have met him? Does he not realize that I am bi? He goes, I don't think so. It's like okay. Well, the next time he's around, I guess I will have to talk to him. My friend Roger used to be bi, but he's gay now, and he's proud of it. Someone told him also, like, oh, you're gay, and he had a funny comeback. And he, you know, he dresses nice and everything from time to time. He says, oh, you're just a gay watch. Like, oh, yeah. You're just jealous because I, uh, I can just pull this off and I'm that fucking fabulous, motherfucker. It's like, well, you're still gay. I like, love this. Like, he's like, oh, you're still gay. He's like, yeah. But at least I fucking know Chai Chi karate and know how to use a Boken staff. And don't worry, I can use this Boken staff to shove up your ass. <laughs> that shut him the fuck up. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I think get, if I was gay and somebody made fun of me being gay, like they looked at me and be like, "You're a gay wad," I'd probably say something like, "Tell your dad I said hi." <laughs> he can actually well, do different my, gay voices. My brother ended up it's... shoving one of the guys um, oh, sorry, into another. the fence hard enough that Ooh. he gave him a, a bruise, almost a black eye. Damn. Because they were all ganging up on his friend, and he had just come around the corner, and my brother had just hit a growth spurt. So he was finally taller than all of his friends. And he's in ROTC, so he's no, military, learning how yeah. to, you know, yeah. defend himself, put on muscle. Yeah. And yet they did not touch him or talk to him again. They left him alone. <laughs> I mean, uh, my friend can do, like, the imitation gaze, like, which one, the foo-foo gays are coming, or just, like, the you kind of gaze, you know. But he's, like, standard, like, like thinking, like, I can pretend I'm straight kind of gay. And that's why, like, I, I just love about him, because... <laughs> uh, the quote-unquote gay voice is not there. Yeah, like, you don't know I'm gay because I'm talking in my mm-hmm. normal voice. Yeah, yeah Actually, speak, I, I love those... Speaking of um, ROTC, does, did anyone, as a kid, growing up watching Power Rangers, think that they knew fucking karate just from, like, watching what the hell they were doing? I was too I confused <laughs> wondering why sparks flew out of human beings. Because <laughs> whenever, yeah. whenever they got hit, they would spark, and I'd be like... That's not right, but whatever, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I, I'm distracted. I'm only, like, what, five years old? Yeah. <laughs> this is right. I just liked it because I can do, like, the kicks and punches. I mean, I fuck my legs nowadays. I can't do a tornado yeah, kick. My husband, <laughs> my husband does not like when I watch anime that has, you know, karate or something in it because he'll be sitting next to me and I get excited and I'll start, like, smacking him. He it's goes, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't help it. It's so awesome. He goes, okay, no more anime for you. Yeah, me and my brother, would, we would watch Dragon Ball Z, and then we'd go outside and play Dragon Ball Z. That was, those were fun things. <laughs> <laughs> I like the <laughs> games better. But yeah, I love the number one insult um, when you kill a lot of people, like on Call of Duty, is, oh, you're gay and stuff. I'm going to pwn you, new. Yeah. Yeah, I hate that. Well, my favorite comeback to that. And usually my friend um, Zachary D. Green 69 is in the party with me. And I'll go, oh, of course I am. How'd you know? And she'll pipe in, hey, remember, you're only half. I was like, yeah, but it's half for you. Half for me. And they all shut up. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand the online talking to where now, it's like, bullying, yeah. faggot or fag bag and using that word. I don't understand, like, how that's now this huge thing. I mean, because I see it. Everywhere now. I, I don't call, know where that where I that came Tom from. I call Tom a fag right now, but he would know with my voice. I am probably joking. Yeah, probably. Don't be such a fag in this <laughs> game. Come on, we're better than this, you know. Yeah, it's like whatever happened to motherfucker or dumbass, like the classics. Like God, I'm, I'm okay with it. the classics. <laughs> I use the classics when I'm mad, and it's yeah. not really directed at the person. It's the character I'm playing. It's like, oh my god, do what I want. That's yeah, why I'm like playing I don't watch. And someone's playing games like, I need healing. Fuck off, Genji! But then people will make friend. YouTube videos, <laughs> and they're constantly playing, saying faggot this and faggot that, and people are watching it and and liking it, and I don't, I can't watch it. Because I'm like, why is he using that word? Like, I don't understand. Like, But he's using it so casually as if the organization of gaming now, everybody uses that word, and that's just a thing now. Yeah. I, like, I, I don't get it. I don't understand... I do not uh, see a I bundle don't... of sticks in your video, right? nor a cigarette in your video, so why are you saying that? It's like, either use the classics or be intelligent. Like, yeah. one of the two. Like, I, I just don't get it. Well, do you guys have any final thoughts before we end this? Because uh, you've been going for One final thought. 
Okay. Yeah, one final thought. I live in Colorado. We're talking about bullying. Uh, schools Stop were way different uh, after Columbine because uh, I was living here when that happened, and I went to school before and after it did. And I just want to say that at least where where I was living at after Columbine, they my schools in my area did take a huge prerogative to do something about that stuff. So some people see actions like Columbine or school shooting. And they're not sure what's going to happen afterwards. These schools, parents, and everybody in the community, they do come together. And they will do some crazy shit. Now, when you're a kid, it's annoying. Because at my school, you had to have your shirt tucked in. If you didn't have your shirt tucked in, you would get detention. Eh, Like, that's how paranoid they were about it. For me, they just give you a warning. And then then they give you a warning. But, but, you know, people take that seriously. And in in Colorado, it was really... Yeah, um, up here in Washington, I, I live about 30 minutes from Seattle. So there's, you know, a lot of bullying in the two districts. Actually, I went to three different school districts growing up. Um, but each one has had some sort of bullying. Either it was name calling or you would see, you know, people being um, abused, like physically abusive, this physically bu- bullying. Yeah. And it's. The teachers, well, they, they, their response is just, well, I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I saw something on the news report about that. It wasn't children fine. It was a teacher and a teacher's <clears throat> aide bitch making Not to be a racist, but they were two black women fighting each other. The, uh, uh, I guess, say, like a middle school kid tried to get in and, like, you know, break it off. Mm-hmm. The principal came here. I forgot what he was being off was like, no, stop. It's like, if you didn't fire those people, they started that. You should fire them. And I think uh, maybe a week later, they one of them got fired. But I'm just like, what are you saying an example for these kids in the in the room? Yeah. Um, True. Well, I am out of time. I want to thank Tom, bad guy, for joining me. I want to thank Bio Woman for coming thank you thank you for thank having you. me no problem i am gold ranger 88 and if you like what you saw leave a comment below and tell us your experience about bullying if you, don't forget to subscribe for, if you want more of the podcast i also do top fives and i'll see you next time bye-bye yay bye